final thoughts heading into what you've been working all year for, really. It's the Iowa caucus today. Well, the stakes are really high, and uh, I think the character of the country is on the ballot. And right off the bat, Iowa is the first gate you got to go through. And so it's really important. And I think the questions are, you know, who's going to be able to beat Donald Trump and restore some unity in this country and, uh, again, to bring us together again. What have you learned from this go around in this campaign here in the state of Iowa? Well, I've learned a couple things. Number one, among the Democrats who are in the caucuses, or are going to be caucusing, is that they desperately want to change the direction of the country in terms of the way in which a president speaks about his people, divides us, talks about, you know, encourages white supremacy and race, all the things that you wouldn't ordinarily get in a campaign. They talk a lot about health care. They talk a lot about climate change. They talk a lot about specific issues. But the overarching issue is that we have to, we, this is not the country we thought we were. This is not who we are. This is, he does not represent the character of the country. That's what I hear the most, at least in the Democrats. So do you think, and a lot of people are looking at the economy saying, hey, if the economy stays strong, he's going to get reelected. You're focusing more on character necessarily than, than economy. No, I say that's what I'm getting asked about. The economy is in rough shape for middle class people. Your farmers aren't doing very well here at all, number one. Middle class and working class people are in the hole. You have a majority of the people who categorize as middle class thinking their children will not do as well as they do. It's very, very good if you own a lot of stock. It's very, very good if you're very wealthy. And it's not so good at all if you're a hard working person who has an hourly job or your salary job where you're making a lot less than $100,000 a year. Senator Sanders has been doing very well once again this cycle. What does it say about the the party? You think, as far as Democrats go, with you know, he's he's pretty far left with a lot of his his uh, his social issues. What does that say about the party that he is polling so strong? Yet he is he's not as moderate as you are with the ability to have some folks that are kind of in the middle. What does it say about the Democratic Party? Well, it's, it's the, the Democratic Party. We're a big tent, and uh, you know, he and I are polling about the same. Um, both in states as well as I'm leading mostly in the national polls, but that doesn't matter much. What it matters, look, if the proposals I am proposing become law, it'll, this administration will go down in history as one of the most progressive administrations in American history. So we're all on the progressive side of the equation. The question is, who can get it done? Who can provide health care for everybody that's affordable, reasonable, and happens? Who can make sure that we do something about climate change and farmers begin to make some income again and, in fact, we deal with the problem? Who's going to be able to go in there and on day one begin to uh, change the laws and be able to deal with the United States Congress and get things passed? And I think that's what this is about and people are beginning to focus on who can get, who can unite the country. You remember, when I started talking about uniting the country from the beginning, people would say, oh, I can't unite can't unite the country, we're in deep, deep trouble. The country desperately wants to be united. I remember I told you I, I covered you back in 08, Harkin Steak Fry, out in the middle of this field. And back then it was, uh, you know, a lot of people that were leading were Obama, Edwards, and Clinton. And, yeah. and it was hard to get access to those people. And I was, remember walking across this field. And here's Joe Biden just kind of walking through the crowd. You didn't have any security around you. I mean, this was before yeah. your days as vice president. What, what is it like being in this state and going from, you know, having people not s just sh corralled around you to now you get all this attention? What, what's the ride been like in the last 10 years? Well, the ride's been real, and uh, it's, been, it's given me an opportunity to be able to continue to work on the things that I really care about, and particularly uh, things that I have been care about and to relate to foreign policy. The next president's going to have no time for on-the-job training. They're going to immediately have to command the world stage, and know every world leader, know who they are for real, not have to go through six, eight, ten month period of getting to know them. They know me, I know them. It's a good start, and we're going to have to rebuild our alliances. So I think that uh, what has allowed me to do is have an international platform as well as a national platform that uh, where I'm known, and I think I've demonstrated I'm able to get things done on the other side as well as. I'm able to pull world leaders together to get things done. Last question, strategy moving forward in New Hampshire. What is, what is well, the strategy? Well, same, just making the case, making the case that, uh, that the, uh, uh, the character is in the ballot. We have to do something about being able to have a president we can trust. Look, the words of a president matter, and what they say and how they say them. 
and they can send brave women and men to war, they can bring peace, or they can breathe hate under the rocks and bring out the worst elements of America. We've got to end this division in America, and this is the second time around for this president, and people now have figured out who he is.